Hey guys, Sickomania here again, uh, shoot episode 2 of my weekly routine maintenance that I do on my uh, saltwater 1 gallon reef vase. And uh, basically what I first start doing is, usually I'll turn my light off a couple minutes before I start working on it because it is kind of hot, but uh, I'll deal with it today. Um, first off, uh, I went ahead and removed the lid already and uh, basically what we're going to do first is we're going to grab a, a siphon hose for the face. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is suck a little bit of the water out for now so I can get my hand in there and work on my uh, corals, rearrange things that uh, might have fallen down this week. I also need to add uh, this duck bill to my pump. So uh, I just need to take a little bit of that water out first so uh, I can get my hand all the way down in there. So let's do that right now. So that's good. That'll be enough. We'll go ahead and set that over there. It looks like we got a little snail that's out of the water. We'll go ahead and uh, put him back in the water. So uh, I did say I was going to frag on this video. I'm not sure if I want to do that right now. Usually I don't frag when I'm going to suck the water all out because it pretty much sucks everything that's in that vase that's not attached to anything through that pipe. So, uh, what I could do is place it in this turkey baster. I'll see if I have a turkey baster in here. If not, I'll just frag later. Uh, I look like I have one. So, what I'll do is I'll shoot a different video later when I go to frag. So, uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in there. I'm going to place this duck bill on my pump right now. It's really hard working on these things because basically any slight movements you can pretty much knock everything down. But it looks like I got that all on there. So what we'll do and I wanted to turn this a little bit more like that. Okay, sweet. So that works good. Got the duck bill on there. I noticed that my bird's nest is getting pretty close to my kenya tree. They're touching each other. They're kind of having a little bit of war. Of a war. So I'm going to try to find a better spot for my bird's nest. It is quite big. And I noticed that um, they don't like that much light. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and grab him and put him where I have this show at. We'll try him out here. Hopefully he does good there. Not anything else in the way, so we'll see how that does. Alright, so that's done now. Now remember, I fed this tank about two hours ago. So, there's a little bit of mysa shrimp in this chair over here. I see a couple pieces over here. And uh, if I was to put my siphon tube in there right now and start sucking all the water out, I wouldn't get all those and eventually those would start rotting. And for a vase like this, there's no filter on it, no protein skimmer on it. So we're going to want to get that stuff out of there. Uh, of course I can leave a couple or a few of those behind for the inverts and the clown globy to eat. And uh, you know they'll take care of that before it causes any issues with my water. So the uh, best thing I've figured out to do is use a turkey baster. And uh, basically you use the turkey baster and you just go through and dust everything off. All your corals off. All the crushed coral down there you dust off. And basically we'll cloud up this vase instead of it being clear it'll be all cloudy full of sediments you know solids that are in the water you know anything that's not uh, dissolved and uh, when we do that that's when we'll suck everything out and uh, basically I'll grab everything that's out of there so let's go ahead and start doing that first things first suck in some water into your turkey baster like so and uh, just start lightly uh, dusting things off and uh, this looks real good if you have any algae or anything anywhere, but uh, this tank doesn't have anything in here, so not too dirty. I noticed uh, that uh, this tank has actually been staying really clean. I got some ice shrimp that are in here in this chia over here.
Now you see that I got a banded coral shrimp and I actually have a fish in here too. So uh, what I try to do is I just try to get things done as fast as possible. Um, obviously I'm going to suck all the water out. I might leave 1% or 2% of the water uh, there. You know, and uh, I've never had an issue with that causing any problems with nitrates or any of my parameters. So we're ready to uh, basically drain this all out. Um, I got my uh, new salt water up to temperature and uh, in pitchers. Uh, either you can use a, a siphon tube if you don't want it to be cloudy at all and you could uh, basically uh, siphon water back into it on top of a rock or something like that. But uh, since I got inverts and a fish in there, this would be the fastest way to uh, basically get water back in there. So we got those ready. I got my five gallon bucket down here and I got my three quarter hose. So uh, I don't even turn off my air pumps. I don't turn off my water pumps at all. Uh, reason I do that is uh, I've noticed that I have a better chance of my pump turning back on if I just leave it alone. Um, a lot of times those things are real finicky. You gotta flick them, take them out of the water, beat them, you know, across the sink until they start firing up. So we'll just leave it on and uh, hope that it fires back on. Um, one thing to be consider to consider being careful about would be watch out. Uh, this thing does suck real fast. You can suck shrimp through it and your fish. So we're gonna try to find the best location, which uh, we'll start up at the top and. Uh, it looks like I'll come straight down into that area right there. I don't have any coral or anything in the way. So this is real tricky in a vase this small, but let's hope for the best, okay? Looks like I got the uh, little bit of the banded coral's tentacles, so we'll just plug it with my thumb. Okay, as things are out. I'm slowing down the flow right now with my finger. You just get, oh, ooh, see that fish almost got sucked up right there. You got to be real careful. Okay. Right there. We got all our water out. You can see, I don't know if you guys can see on that video, but we sure got close to uh, getting that fish sucked up. All right, so what we'll do is we'll grab a pitcher of water, and uh, I just pour right over the top of my rocks. Try not to get it in the sand. And uh, basically what we're doing right now is we're putting in brand new salt water. I'd say this is pretty much a 100% water change out. And uh, that's the trick with these. Uh, of course there's people out there that have Pico tanks that uh, basically do water change outs. You know, hey, this is the easiest way. Uh, you're taking a tank with zero parameters and you're having zero parameters at all times. Uh, you can see I fed, two hours later I changed all the water out. So my parameters are still zero. Um, so there's no issues with anything going on. If I was to uh, basically fill this tank up, walk away, come back a week later, my parameters would still be zero. Uh, I mean, literally, we've uh, been doing this maintenance here for probably about three minutes and uh, all together you're spending six minutes a week or six minutes bi-weekly depends on how many times you want to do your water change outs I like to do them every week just because I got fish in here or a fish and an invert invertebrate and uh, you know I like to feed them all so uh, that was just under uh, a gallon and a half so we'll go ahead and uh, I have a little bit more water. Let me get some more water over here. So basically, uh, it looks a bit cloudy right now, but that's not the case. Tomorrow morning, this uh, vase will be crystal clear. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, fix my air stone. Messed up a little bit. And uh, I'll pick a different route for this guy. There we go. And uh, 
That's it, guys. We're done. I'm going to go ahead and get a piece of cellophane real quick to put over my lid again. And uh, it's just a quick fix until I find my lid or make a lid for it. But uh, I'm going to get that lid back on there. And uh, you're done. That's it. And uh, like I said, there's nothing to worry about now. And uh, I'll, I, uh, Brandon429, if you have a chance, check out his channel. But uh, he's the one that basically told me this is how he takes care of his. And uh, he's the one that started these. Um, you will have more growth out of a vase like this than you will pretty much out of any other tank. And then the reason my thoughts behind it is your water is perfect at all times. And with coral, stability is what you want. You want to basically uh, have stability. And if you have stability, you have really good coral growth, maximum coral growth. And that's what everyone thrives for when they, uh, they own their own reef tank and they want their corals to do good. And that's uh, basically keeping the water quality the same at all times, which uh, does affect coral growth. So... Uh, by having a vase like this, um, even though it's so small, um, it's never getting anything wrong with it. So, uh, with that said, that, that's all. That's all I have to say about these things. Um, real simple, uh, real easy to do, um, and uh, it takes all the guesswork out of uh, doing testing and all of that. So, by far, these are the easiest. Uh, saltwater tanks that you could ever have uh, instead of a 10 gallon, 20 gallon or even a 200 gallon tank these are by far the easiest and the cheapest uh, all together I mean I just spent a uh, dollar twenty five on salt right there and uh, I do that four times a month so you can do the math right there not a lot of money so I hope you guys enjoyed and I uh, hope this helps you guys start your own uh, you guys uh, post any comments if you guys have any questions or concerns, and uh, I'll try to get, get back to you guys as soon as possible. Thanks, guys.